Sayyidina Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu narrates that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said something to the effect. He who performs hajj without committing any obscenity and immorality returns from hajj free from sin like the day his mother gave birth to him. Narrated in Sahih Bukhari. <laughs> Initially stunned to see a man who looks exactly like his brother, Muhammad Amin convinces the stranger to come and meet Umar. A thought is forming in his mind about exactly who Abdullah is, but he does not dwell on it. At first hesitant, Abdullah eventually agrees to accompany Muhammad Amin to the South African tent. Umar is standing outside when he sees his brother approaching, but does not notice the stranger walking a few steps behind him. Ah, Amin, there you are. How did the pelting go? Our agent said he's going to check on the dam. And once it's done, we can proceed to Makkah for Tawaf. Relax, Umar. There's plenty of time for that. Right now, we have a pressing issue we need to attend to. What can be more pressing than this? As it is, Satya said, you still have to go back to the Jamla with Hapsa because she was feeling too overwhelmed in there. Umar, calm down. I'll do that just now. Listen. I met an Arab guy that I want you to meet. <clears throat> Abdullah, come over here. This is my brother, Umar. Ah, huh? Abdullah, wait a second. Do we know you? You look exactly like... Exactly like you, right, Umar? And a bit like me also. Yeah, Arab. I don't understand what's going on. I'm also not sure, but maybe Abdullah can explain. Abdullah, who are you exactly? My name is Abdullah. And I'm from an area just outside Mecca. How come you speak English? My father, he was not from here. He taught me English. But your father, where did he come from? He was from South Africa. But he lived here for many, many years. South Africa? Ya Allah. No, it can't be. Abdullah. And what was your father's name? Uh, his name was Yaqub. Uh, Yaqub Patel. <coughs> Back in South Africa, Umar's mother and his granddaughters are in the kitchen preparing for Eid. They are completely unaware of the exchange happening in Mecca. Ma, are you going to manage to come with us to the farm tomorrow to watch the slaughtering? Of course I am, Bacha. Don't you see how much better my legs are now? I know, Ma. There's going to be quite a bit of walking. We'll have to park a distance from the sheep and with all the rain we're having, I don't think the wheelchair can go over muddy ground. Bacha, I've never missed a kurban in my life. Up until a few years ago, I would always slaughter my own sheep. And since then, I always go to watch. I'll manage the walk to the slaughter area, inshallah. We know, Ma. You're a very brave woman. I always wondered how you managed to bring up your boys all by yourself when you came from Hajj. Tell us about that, Ma. Ah, but, uh, it wasn't easy, but Allah is so merciful. The hardest thing was coming home and having to tell everyone the story about Asma's death and Yaqub's disappearance. The family were all shocked and upset and it took us all a long time to get over it. Did you have to move back in with your parents, Ma? Gee, but uh, I had to. Jacob's parents had passed away when he was a child and he grew up with his uncle. When he got married, his mama G let us stay in their outhouse. So when I came back without him, my parents thought it wouldn't be right to let me stay there with two little boys. And you didn't even know if you were a widow or not, right, Ma? Oh, 
Exactly. That just made the problem even bigger. You're so strong, Ma. If it was me, I would have just sat and cried every day or fallen into depression. And what would crying have helped, Bacha? No, no. I did what I had to do, even though some days I felt like I also wanted to disappear. Just like Jakob had. And in the back of my mind, I always had the worry of what had happened to him. I'm sure Dada and Amin Chacha. Must have kept you going though. Didn't they want to know what happened to their father? They did keep me going, but when they were younger, I just told them that he had passed away. It was only once they were of an understanding age that I explained to them what had really happened. Did you have to work to support them, Ma? No, Bacha. Luckily, my parents were relatively well off and they were more than happy to support me and the boys. And after Yusupai passed away, we were all they had left. shocked to the core at the discovery that Abdullah is actually their lost father's son, the Patel brothers agree to put everything on hold until the Hajj is over. The next couple of days pass in a blur as they go through the motions of Hajj, eventually completing their pelting on the fifth day. Both Hafsa and Sadia have been told of their meeting with Abdullah and they too cannot wait to find out more. On their last day in Mecca, Abdullah agrees to meet them in the foyer of their hotel. I can't believe we're actually going to find out what happened to our father, Abdullah. Abdullah, please tell us the truth. The truth is sometimes hard to bear, my brother. I think we've waited all our lives to hear what really happened to Papa. And as bitter as it may be, I think mistaking you in Mina for Umar wasn't a coincidence. It was the decree of the Almighty Allah. Subhanallah. You are correct, my brother. So tell me, where do I begin? How much do you know of our father since he disappeared? Absolutely nothing. Actually, Ma, our mother, she told us the story of his disappearance in Mina. But everything after that is mere speculation. All we know that he went missing on the day of the first pelting when they came for Hajj in 1957. Ah, then let me tell you our father's story, as he told it to me many times over the years. Abi was having many financial problems when he was living in your country. He had just opened a factory with the help of his father-in-law. And although it started well, Abi started supplying some of the bigger customers on terms. There was one very big customer who came to buy goods from him every six months or so. And one day, the check he gave Abi bounced. When Abi tried to find the man, it was as if the guy just disappeared into thin air. Sure. That's terrible. And Ma didn't even know all about this. Abi said he had to keep the whole thing a secret. Well, he must have been a very secretive man if he could keep his life from us all these years. But what does but what does the factory have to do with Papa's disappearance? Sabar, my brother. I'm coming to that. So Abi was in a serious debt. So he had no way of telling his wife or her father whose money he had borrowed. Then shortly after, he had got the news that they would be going for Hajj. And being under such financial, how do you say, strain, he made a very rash and unusual decision. Abi decided to stay on in Mecca. Ya Allah, you mean he didn't get lost or die? He just decided not to go back home. But wasn't he worried about Ma and us? He had two young sons at home. He had no right just to leave us. Ma always said that she felt she had forced him into making Hajj that year. He kept saying that he didn't want to go, but because our Nana provided the funds, Papa had no excuse not to make Hajj. But if he didn't want to come in the first place, why would he stay here forever? It was the financial problem, my brother. He just could not face it. 
Some men are like that, you know. Abi used to tell me that the stress was too much. If he returned to South Africa, it would have made life very difficult for the two of you. He said, your mother was from a wealthy family and he knew you would all be well taken care of. <coughs> Could you take us to meet him, Abdullah? Ah, my brother, I'm so sorry to have to tell you this. But our father passed away last year. 